get an audit on your life insurance. In this episode, I'm going to address the question, how can I know if I should do a 1035 exchange on my life insurance? Get ready, because I'm going to give you some considerations that most insurance agents do not think about. Hi, I'm Doug Andrew, and I've been a financial strategist, retirement planning specialist for more than 46 years now, and in helping people optimize their financial assets and minimize taxes, one of my favorite vehicles to accumulate money tax-free and then be able to access the money tax-free, provide tax-free income for as long as you live, and then ultimately when you pass away, it blossoms in value and transfers income tax-free. Now, there's only one financial instrument that does that in the Internal Revenue Code, and that's a maximum funded tax-advantaged insurance contract, and my favorite one is an indexed universal life. Now, this is where I've been able to average returns of 8.2% from 1980 up until 1997. After 1997, I've been able to average 11.17 and net uh, 10.07. What's the 1% difference? It is the cost of the insurance that the IRS says has to be there or it won't be tax-free. But it, it's not taxes. I would rather earn 11 and net 10 than try to uh, achieve that kind of a result in a traditional IRA or 401k or a life insurance policy that is underperforming. So once I educate people through my various books and my seminars, many, many times people would come up and say, hey, could you analyze, could you review, could you compare my existing insurance policy with what you're talking about, what you do with your money. I said, sure. So what happens is uh, if you're proficient and you want to be professional, we would order an in-force illustration so that we can say, okay, what if you used your policy? It looks like uh, the agent designed it for his wife and kids more than for your wife and kids. I mean, what do you mean? Well, it's very obvious the agent gave you more death benefit than was necessary if you were doing this primarily for living tax-free income. And maybe they didn't know what they were doing. Maybe your objective was primarily death benefit. And many times they'd say, mm, yeah, I guess it was. But many times they go, well, no. I told my insurance agent that I wanted to have the best uh, rate of return. I know, well, they didn't design it to accomplish that. That's why it's slowly depleting in value. If they're crediting you 8%, you're only netting four. If you're earning eight, you should, you should net seven. If you earn nine, you should net eight. I've been earning 11 and netting 10. And of course their reply is, well, well, I want what you have. Can I move? the money out of this insurance policy to a new one. So first of all, uh, I wanted to make absolutely sure what the objective was before you just do a 1035 exchange. 1035 is a section of the Internal Revenue Code that allows you, if you want to change out, take the money out of an existing old policy that is underperforming and transfer the money into a new one and not trigger tax. Because if you have a gain in the old one, you're going to have to pay tax if you just cash it out. If you 1035 it, the money can't come to you. It goes directly from one insurance company to the new insurance company issuing the new policy. You don't touch the money and it's totally tax-free. And so you want to make sure you analyze this because there are a few critical features and considerations that most insurance agents don't think about. Are you ready? So, the first consideration is if you're going to maximum fund a new insurance policy, let's say an indexed universal life, for the primary purpose of providing tax-free income as a living benefit, more than the death benefit when you ultimately pass away. If that's the objective, then this is a strong consideration. If you have current cash value in your uh, existing insurance policy and it's underperforming, maybe they're crediting you seven or eight percent, but you're only netting three or four because uh, there was too much insurance in there. Well, is it important for you to keep the same amount of insurance? Or if so, then you need to put in more money. 
if you have the money, what you want to do is, is not wait to put it in the new one. And people say, huh? Why would you throw that new money into the old contract? Here's why. Because if you want to be able to have the ability to put in, let's say, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, a, a huge lump sum, if you start a new policy, the TAMRA law, that's a tax citation passed in 1988, says you can't throw in, let's say, 500,000 in one fell swoop. You have to uh, fund it over five years, 100,000 a year. But if you have a, an old policy where you could have put in 500, and you didn't, you only put in 150,000, you have 350,000 of room in the old policy that you didn't use. Well, it's underperforming. So what you do is you throw in, let's say up to 350,000 into the old policy, and then immediately 1035 exchange that to the new policy. And the new policy is maximum funded and you don't have to wait five years. You hit the ground running, with it maximum funding. You don't have to wait five years. You can start taking income immediately. If you didn't do that, you would have then had to have waited two or three or four, five years to get all your money in the new one if you didn't put it in the old one and then turn 1035 it into the new one. What I just told you, you can't believe how many insurance agents do not know that. And it uh, costs people lost opportunity and they have to put off taking out the income for two or three years while they're waiting to comply with Tamra on the new policy because all they ever did was transfer the existing cash value, not the new premium that they put in and then immediately put over into the new policy. Does that make sense? This is a game changer if you're considering taking a 1035 exchange on your old outdated life insurance and putting it into a better performing one that is up to date with some of the uh, features that some of the latest and greatest ones have. So it would behoove you to get an audit. We usually audit and review our own clients' policies at least every year because sometimes in five or six years, it behooves them to do a 1035 from their old policy they took out with us to a new one seven or eight years later. But you want to analyze that it's worth it and that we'll hit the ground running with the new one. So that's the power behind a 1035 analysis by someone who is licensed and proficient to do that for you. So when you consider a 1035 exchange, I would make sure that you consider what I call the LASER test. LASER is an acronym that stands for Liquid Asset Safely Earning Returns. You want to increase the liquidity of your money if you're going to exchange to a new policy. Which one has the most liquidity? Number two, safety. Which one provides the greatest safety so you don't lose when the markets go down and you make money when the market's doing well without having your money at risk in the market? That's why I like indexed universal life. You want to have predictable rates of return that if you earn 11, you net 10, you're not earning a measly eight and netting six or four or five because it wasn't structured correctly. It was underperforming in the old one, but you also want to make sure it's tax free. So as you go through the analysis with someone who's proficient to do this, then you analyze, should I max fund it before I 1035? How do I do it? And you don't want to touch the money or you will bugger it up and trigger an unnecessary tax. To learn more about this, uh, that's what I call my most recent book, The Laser Fund. And uh, this is a max funded index universal life insurance contract. There are 14 chapters in this book that have charts and graphs and explanations. If you like to learn by stories, there are 62 actual client stories on the reverse side. So this is like two books in one. I'll tell you what. The book uh, retails for 20 bucks. I'll buy the book. Uh, it's free to you. You simply pay $5.95 shipping and handling. And you can do that by going to Laser Fund, L-A-S-E-R, laserfund.com. You pay $5.95. I'll buy the book, send it out to you for free, and you can learn. And if you want to listen and learn and watch and learn, there are other options for those kinds of learning portals and instruments on this website.